Hi Abby, it's Courtney again. I would like to read you another story today and this one is called The Oak Inside the Acorn. The acorn looked at the world around him. Green hills rolled their backs in the distance. Bright daisies bloomed below him. Above him, a family of puffy white clouds floated through the blue sky. The world looks so big, the little acorn said to his mother. I'm just glad to be right here with you. His mother was a tall, beautiful oak tree. I'm glad too, my little acorn. It's good for you to be here with me now, but when your time comes to go into the world, you'll be fine. I'll be afraid. The mother oak hugs little acorn in her strong branches. Within you is a great oak, little acorn. Just be the tree God made you to be. The time came to let go sooner than little acorn wanted. It started with a bump. He was resting one summer afternoon, thankful for the coolness and the shadow of the leaves, when thud, the tree shook. Uh-oh, Mom. It's okay, little acorn, Mother Oak said to him. You can't hang on forever. It's time. You've got to let go. Down he fell, flipping over and over, softly slipping through the leaves, until he bounced on something hard. He had landed in the back of the pickup truck. The truck vibrated and we began to drive away. It's okay, little acorn, his mom called out. Within you is a great oak. Just be the tree God made you to be. Little acorn barely heard the last few words. The truck was already moving down the road, going somewhere. He just didn't know where. So the truck bounced, so did the acorn. Ouch, he said, this is rough. It gets better, he heard a voice say. Rolling over, little acorn looked up at a young tree. Who are you? he asked. I'm a little orange tree on my way to be planted. What do orange trees do? asked the acorn. We grow oranges. Okay, little orange tree, it's time for you to be planted, the farmer said as he lowered the truck tailgate and climbed into the back of the truck. Acorn rolled away just in time to avoid the farmer's big boot. The farmer took the tree and it was gone for a long time. Little acorn stared at the sky as it began to darken. He missed his mother and her strong branches. This would be his first night away from her. The tailgate banged and the farmer jumped in. A quick sweep, he said, and headed home. Little Acorn had never seen a broom. He barely saw this one before it sent him high in the air. He landed with a soft thud. I wondered what happened to you. It was Orange Tree. The little Acorn was happy to hear the familiar voice. Is this your new home? It sure is, said the Orange Tree. And it looks like it's your home, too. Little Acorn had one more question. Orange Tree, what do I do next? Orange Tree's voice was sleepy. Just settle in, little friend, and rest. God will make you grow. So Little Acorn did just that. He rested. That night, the next day, that week, the next month, there in the soft soil, surrounded by orange trees, he sank deeper and deeper into the ground and slumbered. He slept a long, long time. When little acorn awoke, he didn't know where he was. He stretched upward. He kept stretching higher and higher till he popped out of the dark dirt and into the sunlight. Well, look who's awake, said little orange tree. Little Acorn looked around and then up. Hello, Orange Tree. Have I been sleeping long? Long enough to become a small tree. Little Acorn looked down at himself and said, I've changed. 
His round shell was now a slender trunk. You are growing up, Orange Tree said. Now you are a little oak. Little Oak straightened himself and remembered his mother's words. Within you is a great oak. Maybe she was right, he thought, and he stood a bit taller. But even at his tallest, he was much smaller than the big orange trees. Their bushy branches grew greener and greener. Then one day, Orange Tree called out to his friend, Little Oak, look, my first orange. The big orange trees spoke up. You'll have many more, they said. So will I, said Little Oak. The trees in the groves laughed. They didn't mean to hurt Little Oak's feelings. But they did. You'll never have oranges, they said, chuckling. Little Oak straightened his branches and pushed as hard as he could. But no oranges popped out. Not that day, or the next, or the next. When the farmer came to collect the fruit, Little Oak was worried. He had none to give. Well, hello, Little Oak, the farmer said. How did you get here? The farmer walked away, and when he returned, he carried a big shovel. I know just the place for you. He lifted the Little Oak tree out of the ground. Bye-bye, my friend, said Orange Tree. The farmer didn't take Little Oak too far away. He carried him out of the grove to his big white house and chose a spot in the backyard. Let's see how you do here, he said. He dug a hole and set the oak inside it. He placed dirt around it and pressed it tightly around the roots. The little oak liked his new home. For the first time, he stood taller than almost everything else around him. The little oak was stretching his roots in the dirt when he heard Hi, I'm Pink Petunia. Who are you? Little Oak looked at the bright flower near the house and started to answer. But Pink Petunia didn't give him time. Rosie's next to the house. Hi there, chirped Rosie. Daisy's here too. That's me, said a white and yellow flower. Hello, little tree. Pink Petunia continued. We are soft and smell sweet. What about you? Little Oak didn't know how to answer. He had no oranges. Do you grow flowers, said Pink Petunia. Little Oak never remembered seeing flowers. Maybe I could. Maybe that's what I'm supposed to do, he said. So he tried hard, as hard as he could. Little Oak grew tired tr trying to grow flowers like his friends. The sun grew hotter. Little Oak, however, just grew taller. As the days grew longer, his roots grew deeper. Every day he tried to grow colorful flowers, but he never could. Pink Petunia could, so could Rosie, so could Daisy. And not little oak. Finally, little oak decided to rest. His branches were tired and drooping. His leaves were dropping. Even the flowers were sleepy. We're gonna rest now, little oak, the flowers told him. And they did. The sky grayed and the day shortened and the whole garden slept. While little oak slept, he dreamed. He dreamed of his days as a little acorn on his mother's branch. Deep in his sleep, within he heard a soft voice. Within you is a great oak. Just be the tree God made you to be. When the sun warmed his branches, little oak awoke. Only he wasn't so little anymore. He could see further. He had grown taller. The winds didn't bend him as much. His branches were as big as his trunk used to be. Little Oak was becoming a big oak. Many years passed, and each year he grew bigger and bigger. Yes. Doing little, growing bigger and bigger. Now Orange Tree and the flowers called him Big Oak. He spread his big branches and looked around. Orange Tree was taller too, but not as tall as Big Oak. Big Oak was taller than all his friends. They were wide, but not as wide as Big Oak. He was the tallest. He was the widest. But he still wondered what he was supposed to do. He couldn't grow oranges or flowers. He just grew bigger, and he didn't know why. Big Oak was just awakening from a long winter's nap. His leaves, tiny buds, when a young farmer brought two rows.